Hey there, Postal here. Uh, well, today we're taking a look at the attacker. So these were some battles from more than a week ago that I recorded and just haven't had the opportunity to voice over. Two different battles we're going to be looking at. Um, as I work on trying to grind this plane out to specialization, yes, this was the first tier 9 plane I ever had. Uh, however, that was before specialization. And after specialization came out, I just continued you know, working on grinding out other lines and never really came back to the Spitfire line. Um, the attacker, it's, it's a really well regarded tier 9 plane, but what's funny is you don't see a whole lot of them out there anymore. What makes it so uh, well regarded? Well, you've got excellent airspeed, especially after the Spitfire. Going from the Spitfire to this, suddenly you are a jet. You are rocketing it around and doing some pretty heavy lifting. Furthermore, you've got pretty darn good maneuverability. You're no Yak-19, but all in all, you've got flexibility as far as your maneuverability is concerned. And with that, you can have a pretty darn good impact on the battle. Lastly, you've got the fourth 20mm cannons that you've grown to love, hopefully, if you've gotten this far. Uh, like so many of the British planes in the game, four 20mm Hispanos, uh, these are stronger than the Tier 8 ones. And they are quite good. Now, what are some of the bad things about this plane? Well, mainly to do with the cannons. The same cannons hit really hard, but their wing mounting makes it awkward for certain engagements. Um, in, mounting on the wings is something from World War II. You'd think uh, after World War II, they would have been like, oh, look, everybody else is centrally locating them on the um, cowling there. But nope. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep them on the wings. Luckily, they fixed that with the Swift at Tier 10. But there's definitely some awkward situations that you run into just because your wing-mounted guns need a very specific distance to actually be hitting properly. Furthermore, the altitude's kind of weak. Um, it's not terrible, but it can put you in some, some odd spaces. Much like the Spitfires before it, though, as long as you're able to maintain some reasonable speed, you will actually be able to mitigate the impact of the medium altitude performance. I didn't even get a chance to mention this particular map. I hate this map. I think everybody hates this map. Uh, we started on the wrong end of the map. We started on the end. Ooh, this frickin' I-211. I was gonna say, if he starts shooting at us, all it takes is one derp from that to get us. Um, you start on the end that we started on, and most of the bots are gonna go for the garrisons, uh, while the enemy team gets command center and the airbase. This map, most people don't play it this way, but the team that gets the airbase is the team that wins the battle the majority of the time. It's one of the very, very few... Uh-oh. Bad idea. <laughs> Don't go head on versus an I-211, an SU-10, excuse me, SU-9, an I-215 aren't really scary unless you're not paying attention and you're in front of them. Then they're very scary. Uh, what was I saying? So, oh, yes, on on this map, it's one of the very, very few maps that the airbase is the needed sector. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, whoever gets this airbase is able to continue the attack on whichever end they go to. We got it, and so now we're able to pressure their command center. In fact, we were we were actually winning the command center for a while. Uh, we didn't get it, obviously, but we're continually putting pressure on them. We're up by mo more than 250 capture points, and now that they've got the command center, they're definitely going to be leveraging it to get in... Uh, to get two sectors taken and then eventually three. They will eventually outcap us, but if we've got that airbase uh, early enough and for long enough, we can set ourselves up for the win. I have been in battles on this map where we got the center and then we lost it relatively quickly and then it's all downhill from there because that enemy team that already has the command center can now respawn in the center as well and get your two garrisons. And it's just like, it's over. It's over. But we're hanging on to the center here. We're playing defense. The attacker's really, really good at defense, especially against things like an I-211, especially versus things like uh, most of the multi-rolls that we're running into here. 
And the 20 millimeter cannons are good enough to take on bombers from time to time as long as you're not uh, getting pummeled by their rear gunner. Strong enough to take on ground attackers, again, as long as you're not getting pummeled by the rear gunner. And right here, we're pulsing the, the cannons. We're not just holding it down or else we would have overheated. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh my god. And so that allowed us to continue to pulse the cannons and have a positive impact against that guy. If we just held down the cannons, we would have completely not done anything because the cannons over would have overheated and we would have been annoyed with our lives. Hoping this guy stays in. Look, we're at 10,000 feet and 11,000 feet and we're kind of floating. So let's get back down, diving down. We're way ahead on points here to the to the point where we've basically got this in the bag. That being said, this map is very good at suddenly you lose this center and everything else starts to spiral out of control. They're slowly getting the garrison that's up there that the command center is going for. I'm not attacking their garrison simply because I'm able to defend this center. Now, if I wasn't able to defend the center, then yeah, I'd, I'd make a decision to go somewhere else. But I seem to be able to handle myself here. Flip it over. We've got 41 seconds until squall line, but I suspect the game will be over by that time, or at least pretty close. And they're taking way too long to capture the garrison, so we're... I'm actually trying to ram that guy, because it's like five hit points or whatever I left him on. They're taking so long to get that one garrison with the bomber runs that we set ourselves up for the win here. Looks like we're not even going to make it to Squall Line. And you just see the flexibility of this plane. Again, it's not a top dog type plane. We didn't have to deal with a 1092 or anything like that or an F-86. But we were able to get a pretty darn good amount of personal points. Got ourselves a Marseille and Akamatsu. Clearly a guardian because we were guarding the heck out of that one sector. And that's the thing to do on this map if you've got the plane to do it. If we were in a heavy fighter, we would have pushed on and continued to the command center. Taken down bombers maybe, things of that nature. With this setup though, perfectly acceptable to camp and, and kill everything. Let's take a look at another battle. All right, so our second battle here, we have a P61 on each team. Um, so we'll see how this goes, right? Good thing is we're tier 9. Um, we've got enough maneuverability. And our cannons are heavy enough hitting. We're in general. If I'm paying attention to the interaction, uh, I should be able to come out on top versus a P61. Another cool thing about this map, if it uh, it's all garrisons, so garrisons are definitely going to win games here. So let's go ahead and let's start capturing. One thing that I didn't mention in the first battle is that the attacker is really good at attacking. I know it's in the name, but I mean, they make a lot of names for a lot of planes. But unlike some fighters, this plane actually is quite good at capturing sectors. It's got the airspeed, it's got just enough firepower, and it's got enough flexibility. It's not going to necessarily be as good as a heavy fighter, but it's got its strengths. So let's go ahead here, see what's going to be the best target to go after. Felt like the um, the heavy fighters were moving a little bit too quickly. Let's see if we can't get this freaking fighter. There we go. Where's the next guy? Let's go for this guy first. Oh, never mind. He's going to be coming straight at us, so let's not do that. We've actually got a bomber inbound, so we need to try to get this guy killed before the bomber starts dropping any munitions. I'm a little bit further out there, Postal. There's an RB-17. I've gone ahead and engaged the engine cooling. Let's see if I can catch up with this guy. Probably not unless he keeps turning. Hey, look at that. What a guy. What a nice guy over here. Problem is, his rear gunner could potentially my butt and I'm about to get in like the way too high altitude right there so my um my maneuverability is probably on par with him at this point cool all right we've got two sectors they've got two sectors we're up by nine capture points which is nothing that p61 is inbound is he paying attention to us I don't know I'm gonna aim a little bit higher he is paying attention to us 
I'm up much higher than I want to be. I lose any maneuverability benefit that I might have here. But he's on low enough health that all I need is a few hits. Get him knocked out. Watch out for this I-211. Don't go head on versus an I-211. All it takes is one RNG mistake. And we'll flip back around here. I am in the yellow altitude, which I don't like usually doing, but I'm not going against an I-211. I can outmaneuver it. And so we'll do that. Really, most uh, multi-role fighters, if, if you're in the yellow, they're in the yellow, you're going to outmaneuver them. There's our P-61. He's on incredibly low health, too. And um, we're up three sectors to two, so we're slowly gaining an advantage, but this is not a type of battle where I would just want to, like, hang out and defend sectors. We'll get this defense kill here. See if there's anything we can be effective against. Saw that heavy fighter. Luckily, it's 262 and not a P61. Not that a 262 is weak, but a P61 just causes all kinds of issues with its maneuverability. There we go. I am defending this sector, just not really on purpose. Let's go ahead and see if we can go capture a sector, maybe. Maybe I just really want to kill this RB17. I don't even know. It really makes sense to me. They captured the center anyway, so I suspect I'll just turn back around and hang out at the center and capture it right back. Yeah, is that what we're going to do? We're going to do that? All right, cool. Yeah. Let's head on back down here. Oh, crap. They're up four sectors to one. So we've really screwed up by, by camping the center. Fortunately, the P61's camping the center, too. Um, for better or for worse, that's what a lot of P61's do. They're really, really good at defending sectors, so I understand why they do that, but... You know, ABC, you got to always be capturing. Let's see if I take my own advice here. So we're going to try to capture this sector as quickly as possible. Looks like we're going to capture it pretty darn quickly, actually. Combination of me and, the, and our friendly P61. It's actually in my clan. Or in the same clan as me. It's not like I own the clan. Got him Akamatsu already. We're moving on up. Uh, what do we need to do to get rid of this guy? A Horton. A Horton. Yeah, he's in trouble. Whether he knew it or not, he was in trouble. All right, so now we're still camping the center. We are tied on on capture points. We've got three sectors to their two, so we'll slowly be pulling away. And right now, it's just like they're, they're feeding me, basically, whether they realize it or not. Whether I realize it or not, they're keeping me in the center, which is not what I want to be doing. I need to go capture a sec another sector. Let's see if we can't knock this guy out. Not overly worried right now. We're like a third of the way into the battle. It's RB17. I just have a thing for killing RB17s, I guess. I'm tap, tap, tapping the cannons again. And then right at the end, I'll hold down the trigger just to make sure that uh, my shots are firing as often as possible. That Horton's pulling away pretty quickly. I guess we're slowly catching up. Mm, what are we doing here, Postal? Yeah, that's a better idea. You don't want to go against a friggin' P61 and a Horton. And we probably don't want to go head on versus this guy. Oh, good, he's turning away. Why are we killing him outside of sectors? Who knows? Pay attention to the map, pay attention to the map, pay attention to the map. Yep, there's that Horton. Excellent. We still have three sectors to there, too. Oh, why are you turning, sir? That was a mistake. I thought you were going to keep going. Uh, it's too late now. Too late now, hombre. Although you fixed your wing, so maybe it won't. Well, never mind. I broke your wing again. Let's go capture a sector, shall we? I think we shall. Ooh, there's that P61. He is inbound. Let's make sure that we're at a funky angle, so we're not just going at an angle that's easy for him. I'm actually turning on pneumatic control assist here. That's how little I trust my ability to outmaneuver a heavy fighter. Not that it's the attacker's fault, it's the P61's fault. Come in. Come on. There we go. Outside the sector, unfortunately, but we still have four sectors to their one. So that's definitely a good thing. Let's see what is going on here. Can we get it? 
Oh, they captured a sector back. I want to go for the guy in the back. I don't want to attack the guy in front because if I do that, then this guy that I'm shooting at right now would be shooting me in the butt. That's not what I want. All right, squall line. We just got an ace, got a hero of the sky. Uh, we're doing pretty darn well. We're up four sectors, two, one. And we're setting ourselves up for the win. Let's not freaking die for it though. This is not the time to die. God dang, F-84. The F-84's uh, machine gun's stronger than my cannons. I think the American machine guns got over buffed. All right, so let's angle down a little bit here. Let's get some extra speed. We definitely have got some flexibility. They're the ones that need to, to push the attack, right? They're the ones that are down on points and down on sectors. We're up by almost 200 points now, and we're up by an additional two sectors. So at this point, let's just uh, put the final nail in their coffin and capture this center sector. I know there's a heavy fighter there, but he's going the other way, so that's fine. Let's get rid of the RNG. Zip, maybe. Perfect. Pull up! And that's going to definitely be game. There's not a lot they can do about anything at this point. And the old GG's. Cool. Excellent. So we got uh, Marseille, obviously, just because we were alive the whole time. Got him a Campbell. Got an Ace. Got a Nakamatsu. Got a lot of things just kind of squeezed in there. I'm sure you can read about them all. Um, <laughs> a pretty darn good battle. And that time we were attacking. We were living by our name. And putting ourselves in the best place possible to be able to to get the win. Even against two planes that a lot of people think are very, very... Well, they are very strong. One of them, I think, is overpowered. But we were able to come out on top. All right, so that first battle, we got 19 kills, of course. Uh, which means we're working on some missions here. This is an older older mission that we're doing here. 520 capture points. Obviously, that was all defending. Uh, most of it, 80 points of it, was capturing. And that led to the 8,000 damage done to aerial targets. 11 kills while defending. You know, quintessential fighter holding on to a sector. Trying to set yourself up for a win that way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second battle. All right, so for that second battle, we got 23 kills, 9,800 damage to aerial targets. Probably that RB-17 all the time. 620 capture points, but 340 of that was actually capturing sectors, and we captured four sectors as well. The attacker just, it can you can do what it says it does right on the tin, right? It has that flexibility. It is a good all-around capturing airplane and it's not too shabby at defending sectors either as long as you're able to judge the distance of your uh your 20 millimeter cannons let's take a look at the overall plane now for the attacker setup you have four 20 millimeter cannons these are the same 20 millimeter cannons that you earn on the 1056 the great thing about the attacker is these are the only guns so as soon as you research the attacker you've got the top guns and they're very strong Furthermore, you, if you've already earned the attacker, those cannons can now be utilized automatically on the 1056. Perfect, right? Um, upgrade the airframe. My recommendation would be, though, is honestly to go for the engine first. Getting the top engine is going to make such a big difference in your overall airspeed that that's really important. I would go for the airframe second. Everything will work out fine. As far as my pilot is concerned, I have my pilot set up with aerobatics expert, with aerodynamics expert, and I'm waiting to get the extra point. I will trade out the engine guru for Marksman 2. I think Marksman is quite important on this plane simply because your cannons are on the wings and not centrally located. If they were centrally located, I'd probably recommend resilience instead, but that's gonna have to be something for the future. My overall setup on this plane, I've got it as a balanced build right now. I do have an experimental polished skin, and so I've gone ahead and used that for the additional speed. That way my overall maneuverability isn't as impacted as if it was a normal polished skin. If you don't have experimental polished skin, I'd actually probably be using the lightweight wing frame instead here, and then go with the engine uh, upgraded engine here. That'll still give you that balance approach of the maneuverability and the speed without having as much of a detriment to your maneuverability if you had regular polished skin. Once I get this upgraded, I'm going to go ahead and put the upgraded engine on here. And for the forward firing weapons, the great thing about Hispanos is put whatever you want. 
What do I mean by that? Well, if you just want more range on those cannons, put the long gun barrels. The 20 millimeter Hispanos will do great. You want to put gas operated action on there to get higher damage per second and just more volume output? Feel free to do it. The 20 millimeter cannons are, are really good with that. Reinforced bolt carriers, those are probably the least of my three choices. They're not bad per se, but what do reinforced bolt carriers do? They extend the, the amount of burst that you can have. Basically allow you to hold down the trigger for longer. I've got it down right now to where I've got the trigger discipline and I don't necessarily need to be able to hold down the trigger more. Personally, I'm probably going to go with gas operated action because I've got the trigger discipline, because I'm used to the range. What the heck, let's just put out more damage per second with the guns that I'm already used to. Of course, you're going to go ahead and put the uh, gyroscopic sight on here. I say of course, mainly because the other options might not be bad, but getting the cannons on the target is really, really important. G-Suit, I could completely understand somebody wanting to use G-Suit on here, and it could be a very viable option. I haven't chosen that yet, but G-Suit allows for more maneuverability at high speeds, and you've got really good high speed with the attacker, so that could be a good option. Navigational radio equipment, it's one of those uh, joker cards, right? Being able to increase your view range while decreasing your detectability range, making it a sneaky attacker may turn it into a ninja, right? Uh, but that being said, right now I'm leaning towards just getting my cannons to hit and utilizing my WASD hacks to, to make everything else work. As far as consumables are concerned, my completely, this is like Postal's basic um, fighter consumable setup. You've got the first aid package, pneumatic control assist, the engine cooling, and universal ammo. There's no reason for me personally to have anything different here. I want to put my pilot back in as often as possible. I want to be able to outturn some planes that I might not necessarily always be able to outturn. And I want to get that 10 seconds worth of extra boost whenever I get the opportunity. Universal ammo, I mean, what the heck, use it because it's there. Once I specialize the plane, then it's, it's up for grabs. I might put improved mixture control just to get more speed and engine thrust out of this plane. I can do that understanding that I've made that decision and if I get my engine knocked out, sucks to be you Postal, but you made that decision. Most people I would recommend going for the manual engine restart on this plane instead. That being said, I don't get the engine knocked out all that often. I have played this plane eight or nine times uh, trying to get this to specialization. I'm still 24 uh, enemy kills away from getting specialized. And I've gotten the plane's engine knocked out like twice maybe? I'm not even sure it's twice. It's once, I'm sure, but I'm not sure twice. We'll just say twice. So I'm probably going to be personally leaning towards the um, improved mixture control. Again, this plane is absolutely great plane. Uh, you don't see it out there nearly as often as you used to back when 2.0 first came out. Really well balanced speed and maneuverability with mediocre altitude performance and strong enough cannons. Made it for a, a formidable opponent and it still is. There's just a lot of other things going on right now and I think the attacker mentally has been left behind even though its viability is still 100% there. The extra funny part about this is, remember I mentioned this is is my first tier 9 plane and besides the FJ1 which I could specialize if I just threw some money at it every other tier 9 fighter I've got specialized F6U, Yak-19, MiG-9, LA-160, Antonov M, TA-183, MEP-1092, even the Ki-162 Mark 1 specialized and like I said the FJ1 could be specialized if I just clicked the freaking button the attacker being the first tier 9 plane that I ever had uh, is still not specialized and that's kind of a shame isn't it let's get this thing specialized i'd love to hear your opinion on the attacker is it still a plane you take out i don't believe you because i never see anybody flying it anymore or is it just a plane with with so many other other planes in the game recently kind of forgot about it and you want to go back to playing because you know it's a good plane i'd love to hear what you're going through right now and if you haven't earned this plane you want it it's one of the reasons i recommend going down the spitfire line as your first line a, the Spitfire line is just user-friendly. Uh, it's a strong enough line. It's not overpowered, but it's a strong enough line, and you eventually get to this plane at Tier 9. The Tier 10, hold your horses. It's really difficult for, for a lot of uh, pilots. The Tier 9 plane is more of the great same that you had with the Spitfires previously. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying your day, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.